Director of Admissions here at FIDM. Before we begin our program today, I want to introduce you to two fellow admissions advisors, my co-host, Jennifer Clark, and Matt Shug, who will be behind the scenes answering your questions online. Uh-oh, Denise, I think you're muted. We don't want to be muted. Okay, so I was just saying, we've all worked in admissions at FIDM for many years and agree that our absolute favorite part of the job is helping students find the major that is the perfect fit for them and then seeing them flourish in school and their careers. So we really thank you for being here today. Today, we'll be focusing on our design majors. We will begin by giving you an overview of FIDM, then we will introduce a few of our wonderful design students who will tell you about their experiences at FIDM, why they chose their major, and answer your questions. I want to begin by giving you a little bit of background about FIDM. The college was founded in 1969 with only two majors, fashion design and fashion merchandising. We've grown to an internationally renowned college with over 30 majors, ranging from fashion, visual, and interior design to the business and entertainment industries with over 70,000 alumni. Our classes are taught by leading industry professionals and we offer Associate of Arts and Bachelor degrees as well as a master's in business administration. We also have professional designation programs because our students come to us at a variety of stages in their lives from high school students to college students, to transfers, to military veterans, and to second career seekers. Through all the years, our goal has essentially remained the same, to have an engaging, rigorous learning environment that blends theoretical and applied learning or project-based learning, which ultimately prepares students to launch a successful career upon graduation. When students attend FIDM, the surrounding city is part of their education. One of the great things about Los Angeles is that in addition to fashion, just about every industry is represented here. This allows our students to have excellent internships that prepare them to work for top rated companies or to become entrepreneurs and build their own brands. The campus itself is located in a very walkable neighborhood known as South Park. It's next door to the fashion district, but has an urban suburban mix with coffee shops, parks, boutiques, and restaurants all nearby. Not far from the campus is Hollywood, Beverly Hills, Rodeo Drive, beautiful beaches, museums, the Grove Shopping District, and so much more. FITM is a closed campus with an excellent security staff. The Business Improvement District, known as BID, has also done a great job in providing local security guards who make sure the area is safe for all the residents. The FITM housing is also in this community and is walking distance from the campus. There are virtual tours of the beautiful housing on our website if you want to take a peek. Los Angeles is definitely an exciting city to live. It has entertainment, culture, and opportunity, and our students take advantage of it all. Living here gives them the opportunity to work part-time in the industry while they're in school, take advantage of internships, and then to have careers with companies all over the United States and even internationally. This slide is showing a tiny sampling of where our grads work. We have grads at Disney, Nike, Pixar, Levi's, Nordstrom, ColourPop, J Brand Jeans. You name it, we probably have a grad there. But we also have numerous alumni who have started their own companies and brands. It really all depends on what their goals are. One of the keys to our graduates being employable is the relationship they develop with the Career Center. From the beginning of their education, students are given one-on-one -on -one access to the career advisors, as well as the online career portal. The career advisors teach professional skills classes to help students develop their resumes, interviewing skills, portfolios, and to help them to define their goals. They assist students with getting the internships. They offer graduate job fairs and provide lifetime career assistance. Literally, the relationship students build with the Career Center is lifelong. Not only do our alumni come back to the college to look for jobs, but to hire FITM students for their own companies. The networking opportunities at FIDM are endless. Students can network with the alumni, the faculty, industry guest speakers, and most importantly, with each other. It's true, Denise, the Career Center is key. In addition to utilizing the Career Center services, it is important for students to get involved while they're on campus. At FITM, we know that the social component is key to a, 
to a student's successful college experience. Participating in student activities is an important way to get involved. We have many clubs on campus that have something for everyone, including, but not limited to, Black Student Union, Phi Theta Kappa, Student Council, Mode Magazine, Student Veterans Association, and more. I always tell students that I work with to say yes to everything in their college experience, to join every club, to shake every hand or elbow bump since it's 2021, um, and take every business card. By being active in clubs and on-campus events, students are able to meet great guest speakers, which allows for building connections within the industry and the community at large. There are volunteer opportunities and ways to give back to the community through philanthropic endeavors, as well as opportunity for off-campus adventures. Now, let's talk a little bit about inclusion and support. At FITM, we believe in supporting all students and their individual educational and career goals. We are also very invested in our students' mental health and well-being. To that end, we offer personal counseling services and have an open door policy across all departments. Students can meet with their department chairperson, their student advisor, even the vice president of the college or whomever they need to in order to stay completely connected to their FITM experience. Most importantly, FITM fosters an inclusive and diverse staff, faculty and student body. On-campus tutoring and educational resources are available as well. Help is here for the taking. The Idea Center offers individualized tutoring to students in a variety of subjects, such as English, math, Photoshop, Illustrator, and fashion sketching. We also have instructor-led lab studio time, an extensive state-of-the-art fashion, design, and art library, and a sustainable, innovative materials workroom. FITM also offers many workshops and lectures on topics important to our students. For instance, this week we have a lecture discussing the state of sustainability in creative industries, a topic we know is of special interest to many of our students across all majors. So true, people love to take advantage of all the activities on campus, but let's talk about some of your options beyond the campus. FITM offers a variety of opportunities for study abroad and cultural exchanges. In a more typical time, our study tours would be taking trips to Paris, Italy, and China. But even though travel has been halted due to COVID, that hasn't stopped our students from exploring other cultures. Right now, our study abroad includes Zoom meetings with international designers and manufacturers, a cooking class from the Dominican Republic, a fresco painting class with a teacher in Florence, as well as other industry meetings so students can get behind the scenes experiences. Some of our advanced degree majors actually have travel as part of the curriculum, like the IMPD program. The students go to Europe on a business trip and then to Asia to visit production facilities. We also have some local study tours and international exchange programs that allow students to study abroad for a full semester. So you may be asking yourself right about now, how can I take part in all of this? Your first step is to request an admissions advisor on the FITM website. The application process is a very personalized experience and your advisor will guide you through the entire process, including selecting your major and applying for scholarships and financial aid. For high school seniors and graduate, there is still time to apply for this July or October's starting quarters. Applications are accepted on a rolling basis as space permits. For the high school class of 2022, we do have a junior advantage priority application deadline of June 30th. If you qualify for this, there are some special privileges that come with meeting this deadline. All right, thank you, Denise. Now we have some fabulous current students that we're gonna to welcome to the screen. They're going to impart wisdom on us, um, information about their FITM experience. We'd love for everybody out there to go ahead and put your questions in the Q&A box for the students or for myself. Um, but let's get to know these students just a little bit better. Um, I'm gonna have you guys pop your screen on and then why don't you tell us your majors are on the screen, but that's okay. I'm gonna have you tell us your major anyway. Um, tell us your major, where you're from, and if you're currently in LA. Uh, Chaslyn, let's start with you. Hi everyone, I'm Chaslyn. I am a merchandise product development major in my last quarter of my associates. 
And I'm actually from Rhode Island, but I'm currently in downtown Los Angeles, right across the street from Vidim. Great, thank you. And Julia, what's your major and where are you from? Hi everyone, my name is Julia Mager. I am a visual communications major and I am from Maryland and I am currently not located in the Los Angeles area. Great, so uh, good. We'll talk about that in a little bit as well. Ella, tell us a little bit about you and where you are right now. Hi, yeah, my name's Ella Titus. I am getting my bachelor's in fashion design right now. And then I'm from Iowa, but I'm currently in downtown Los Angeles as well. Excellent. All right, so we're gonna take some questions from the audience. I think good to ask students about both hybrid learning, on-campus learning, uh, being in LA, if anybody is from out of state or out of the area, wants to know what it's like to live in LA, please let us know. Uh, we have one question from Kirsten Louise. Is there a major in FITM for business? I'm just gonna answer that really quickly, but then I'll defer to our um, you know, guests. That, yes, we offer business majors, we offer design majors. What I think is important to know as well is that in many of our majors, even our design disciplines, there's really a foundation that's rooted in business. I think all of our students can speak to having taken some business classes. Um, fashion design takes business of fashion. I know product development students take a lot of business classes. So maybe I'll have you guys answer. Chaslin, have you taken some business classes in your product development program? Yeah, so that's actually the reason why I chose product development. When I was applying for Tefitum and I was speaking with my admissions advisor, I had told her that I wanted to be an entrepreneur and do like all of these business things. But then she looked at my portfolio and she was like, are you sure you don't want to do something more creative? And then I kind of realized like, whoa, like I actually do love design and like all of the creative things. So that's what I love about product development is it actually combines both business and design. So I was kind of able to get the best of both worlds through that. I think that's great. And that's a great thing for everybody to kind of know walking away that A, you'll have access to an admissions advisor who will really help you. Many of our students, many creative students are interested in many different topics, right? If you're a creative person, you might love design, you might love business, you might love PR, you might love event planning, and that's okay. We can help you narrow down perhaps a pathway that might be appropriate for you or to curate the education according to what you ultimately want to do. Ella, in your fashion design program, have you been able to take some business classes? Yeah, so um, we have the business of fashion class that you mentioned kind of built into the associate's curriculum. And now that I'm in the bachelor's curriculum, they kind of they kind of almost take all the classes and kind of focus it around business a little bit. Like I know I came into FITM wanting to do design so I could start my own label and company one day. So all my teachers, since they all have in, um, like industry experience, they've all been like, think about this, but like also here's how you would do it in your own company or here's how you do it in a different company. So it kind of like, we do have a couple set business classes, but they also kind of find a way to kind of intertwine it into the whole major, I felt. Right. Yeah, great, because it's important, right? And I think that that's an important distinction between perhaps a fine art program and a design program. We're really preparing students for professionalism in this industry, and part of that is to understand the business of this industry. Okay, I have another question. Um, I'm going to ask Chaslin to take this one again, because I know you are involved a lot in clubs. And then if anybody else, um, you know, Julia or Ella, if you're involved in clubs as well, but Tell us about activities that are on campus, including clubs, et cetera. So Chaslin, you wanna tell us a little bit about the club that you run? Sure, yeah. So I'm actually in a lot of clubs at FITM. Um, I'm in FITM mode, which is the school's magazine, which is run by the students, which is a lot of fun. And I'm also in Black Student Union, which is actually a new club that we're coming up on our like one year anniversary this July. Um, and I'm actually the vice president of that club. So that is for students of color to come together and kind of have a little community, um, especially now that we are like stuck online. That was so important to us. So that's a lot of fun. And I'm also in the FITM Social Ambassador Club, which is basically a bunch of like-minded FITM students who love to create content and share their experience at FITM online. Excellent, thank you. Anybody participate in Mode or any other clubs on campus? Great. You want to tell us a little bit about that during um, online learning time? Did you say you were part of that, Juliet? Oh, I'm sorry. It was Ella. 
Julia can go for it. I was just gonna say, I know Julia and I both just started the um, ambassador program. So I guess, I don't know, this is kind of, yeah, we can't really speak on it too much because we just started this is our first quarter doing it, but that's one thing that we're both kind of um, involved in. But. Good, that's great. And I think something important to know for everybody who's kind of interested out there that all of our clubs and events have kind of continued throughout remote learning. So it's been a great way also, as I had mentioned earlier, for students to really get connected to the community. I think community is so important. You're in a community of like-minded students following a passion-driven path. So to be together, I think is um, important, even when we can't be together, but we can be together and we are together and some of us will talk about hybrid classes if we get asked that question. Um, all right, let's see what else we've got here. Oh, this is my favorite. What is life like in downtown LA? What are your favorite things to do? And what are what's the FITM housing like? Let's start with Ella. Totally. Um, I personally love it in downtown LA. Um, it's definitely, I guess I moved here from Iowa. So I was kind of in like a small town, like not a big city. So it was a little bit of a culture shock at first, but luckily um, being in student housing, I made a lot of really close friends who were also very new to the area. So we kind of all figured it out together, but it's a lot of fun. Um, it's one of my favorite things to do down here. Like there's a lot of great restaurants. Um, if you're in the fashion design major or even just like sewing or anything like that, the fashion district, I love it down there. You can find like any fabric ever and right next to it's the flower district so you can go like buy fresh flowers it's just really pretty so there's a lot of there's always something to do downtown i feel like um yeah and do you get to venture outside of downtown do you guys hit up the beach very often or go to hollywood very often anything totally. like that yeah so i um yeah so i like to go all over the place i actually work in beverly hills so um which is a job i got through the career center at fitum which was really great but i work over there so i'm kind of all over the place there's a lot of really great spot i don't know it's just so much fun to explore there's so many different places to go but good chaslin do you have the same experience downtown yes i love downtown la even hanging out at fitum um, at the grand hope park with friends is always fun and um kind of like ella was saying you can pretty much like drive anywhere um, my favorite place to go, my friends and I like to go to the Santa Monica Pier sometimes. Um, and for student housing, I think that was a part of the question. Um, I did that for a year, loved it. It was a great way to meet all of my friends that I have now and kind of connect with people. Yeah, great. I do think that student housing is kind of an important experience for students, particularly coming from out of state. Again, it goes back to that community piece where if you have built in friends and you walk to class together and you explore downtown in LA together, there's something very kind of comforting and knowing that you've, you know, you're with people. Um, okay, I've got from Scotland, Wallace, what kind of classes and what do you focus on in fashion design and product development? So let's have uh, Ella start with fashion design. And then um, Chaslin, maybe you can tell us in product development if there's any kind of differences that you've noticed between the two programs. Yeah, so fashion design, when you get kind of in, like you have, I think a lot of the majors share some gen eds kind of, but once you get into kind of what makes fashion design, like the fashion design major, I know we had a lot of classes in patterning and sewing. One thing that I think was really cool that a lot of people found when they started the FITM or the fashion design program is that you don't really have to know how to sew necessarily to start fashion design. Like you take a really great sewing class, a really great patterning class. Um, so you do a couple of those and then you start doing like collection development and all, all of that where you really just get to like, really like design and create your own little collection, which was my favorite class that I think I did in my associates. Um, so yeah, just really very creative things. You also take some art history classes, some like theory of design and color theory classes. So just kind of things like that, but there's definitely a big emphasis in the patterning and the sewing, at least for fashion design. Excellent. So you said something and maybe I didn't dial into it early, but are you in the bachelor's program now? I am. Yeah, I'm on my third quarter of the bachelor's program. And I found it's almost like the associates, but like taking each class a little bit further, like it's still very much like focused around like the art theory and like the patterning and the sewing and the design and all of that. But it's really looking at it as like, I almost felt like the associates was a little bit more like business focused in a way where it's like, this is how you do it, this is how you execute it, you're good to go. Where the bachelor's is almost like, okay, but let's take this idea and like make it like 
very, very creative and like do this. Not that the associates wasn't creative. They're both great, but it's like almost taking like that part of your brain a little bit further, which I really appreciated. So yeah, that's great. Yeah. You're building on that foundation that you got totally. in those first two years. That's awesome. And Chaslin, tell me about product development. How do you find, you probably don't know how it dis- differs for fashion design, but I'm assuming that you have a lot of fashion design friends. So how, how, what do you find that it differs in the way that it's offered? Yeah, actually, it's very similar to fashion design. We do have to do pattern making and sewing and all that, but it kind of takes it a step further where it's super broad. So the main thing I always say about product development is like you learn so much. You do trend forecasting, lots and lots of digital sketching, creating a brand, um, marketing, trend. I think I already said trend forecasting. And then all of the gen ads are pretty similar to what Ella was saying. But for me, um, because it was so broad, I was kind of able to like pick one thing that I liked and now I can go into my bachelor's um, and I'm gonna be doing digital marketing for that. So for all of those digital design and kind of like branding classes that I was doing, I decided to do that. Some students decide to do technical design, others decide to do fashion design. So it's super broad, which is like the main thing I love about product development. That's awesome, great. And I think what's important too is that again, throughout the course of your first two years, you're learning what you really love. And then you get to curate again your pathway in your last two years to kind of almost narrow down that focus or become the expert in that thing. Um, I have a great, great question for um, Julia. So, oh wait, I just lost it. This thing jumps around a little bit, sorry. Oh. Oh, here we go. Um, Okay, the question from Alicia is, would you recommend international students applying for design to wait until they can move down to the campus? And how much would someone miss out on if they start taking online classes? So can I preface it really quickly by saying, right now we do offer remote classes as well as a hybrid option. I know Ella and Chaslin are taking some hybrid classes and Julia is doing the remote option. In the summer, we're going to be offering more hybrid classes. I think, um, you know, we're going to, we started with this kind of soft reopening and in the summer, which begins in July, we'll offer more classes on campus. And in the fall, we're prepared for a full reopening. So just so everybody knows kind of the plan, this is also outlined on our website. There's a great video and a really great explanation of how we pre- we're preparing to open. So Julia, tell us a little bit about online learning, how it's it's been for you? Do you think it's important to be on campus or or not? Um, so I started my journey in fall. So the past three quarters, I have been remote, but I've had the most amazing experience still being remote. Um, they send all of your supplies, which is always so fun to get in the mail. You always dive into it and get to see all the goodies that you get to work with. Um, It's been an amazing experience working with like the professors and the students. I don't feel like not being on campus, I haven't skipped a beat. Um, That's another thing that you mentioned. FITM is so inclusive and always aware and like keeping students um, up to date on things. So I don't feel like I've skipped out on a beat or have missed an opportunity. Um, I've just built a little FITM from home and it has been going amazing so far. I'm so glad to hear it. And I think something unique to FITM and some there's a distinction that I'd like to just kind of put out there. So there's online learning, there's remote learning, and there's hybrid learning. And at FITM, we really pride ourselves on the remote learning piece. You are in a classroom, just like this in a Zoom, one-on-one with your instructors, meeting other students, you see the student body. So Julia, when you're ready to move to LA, you already know everybody. So it's a very, remote is very different from pure kind of online class. So I think, um, I think that's great. And that's a good distinction. So thank you. Uh, what is the process of preparing a portfolio for fashion design? So I'll just speak really quickly to that. And then we'll ask maybe Ella what you did for your fashion design portfolio. So at FITM, we require for all of our design majors about eight to 12 pieces of existing work. 
these pieces do not need to be fashion design related. So if you're a fashion design major, but you've never sewn, you've never taken an illustration class, but you've taken maybe art classes and you have painting, or you love photography, or you've even taken ceramics and you've made sculpture, whatever it is, we will look at eight to 12 pieces of existing work. Um, did you do it that way, Ella, or did you have some fashion design work when you came in? Yeah, so I had actually mostly fashion design work when I came in. When I was in high school, I was the president of our Fitum Fashion Club, um, and we did a fashion show every year. So I had created like a collection for our fashion show. So I um, sent in like images and pictures of everything. I wasn't in LA, obviously, so I didn't bring in like my physical garments, but I sent in pictures and all of that. And I'm trying to remember, I think I might have put in a couple just like still life drawings I'd done in a high school art class, but most of mine I think was fashion based. Um, Excellent. Yeah, I had a lot of fun putting it together though. It was kind of like a, it was a fun, it, was, it wasn't like an assignment, but it was like a fun little thing to do. Plus it got me into fit them. So that was yeah. bonus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's great. I mean, some students have work, some students who have participated in fashion club or have taken sewing classes. So if you have it, great. If you don't have it as a design major, don't let it intimidate you. We want to look at the depth and breadth of your creativity and your artistic ability. Um, I see a question here that's that I love and it's kind of a two part question uh, from Michael. What type of inspiration did you gain from being in Los Angeles and or has it changed the way you design things while being at FITM? So has your design maybe aesthetic evolved Ella or Chaslin as you've been here? Yeah, I would say absolutely. Um, I find myself really inspired by art and architecture. And so especially being in downtown Los Angeles, there's a lot of really beautiful um, architecture. And there's also a lot of great art museums around Los Angeles, which I didn't, I mean, I had an art museum back in Iowa, but it wasn't like the art museums here. So definitely having access to all of that really um, kind of helped me build on my inspiration and kind of like my aesthetic. And then also just the art classes at FITM, um, learning like the history of art and stuff like that personally for me, like really kind of helped put everything together for me and kind of build my design aesthetic. Good. And Chaslin, has your sensibility changed at all with your education? Yeah, for sure. I think even just like being at FITM and being surrounded by so many creatives all the time is like so inspiring. Like even if I like I just think, yeah, I just, especially when you're on campus, you still get the same feel in your online classes, of course, but just like being surrounded by so many different people um, can really inspire you to kind of change like, like either your aesthetic or just like even your work ethic. I think it's just a really good environment. Excellent, thank you. Um, okay, I have one, I've got two, but I have one for Julia. Um, what path should I take to become a wardrobe stylist for TV shows and movies? So I'm going to preface this before Julie answers because I'm assuming you've taken your styling class already or have you not? I have not yet. Okay, well, to, we'll pick that up at another time, but we're not going to pick up this question because I think, um, I think what's important to know is when students are looking at majors, we do want to think about where do you ultimately want to be in this industry, but I think what's important to remember is that FITM is a college preparing students for the totality of an industry. So your major is not going to define you. There are many avenues to take to go into a styling position and visual communications happens to be one of them. You want to tell us a little bit about your major? Sure. Um, so as a VCOM major, um, I love that you mentioned how broad it is because VCOM is a very broad major with different careers that you can come out of it, um, such as like event planning, um, visual merchandiser, stylist. There's just so many different um, professions that you can come out of. And what's neat too is the classes also are very broad. I've taken classes from Adobe to different various sketching classes. Um, I'm currently in a intro to social media class. So you get all that nice background from the different classes and then how you can um, use that once you've graduated from FITM and what you've picked for your desired career. It's been amazing. <laughs> Excellent. And that kind of brings me to Diego's question, which is, can you double major? Students cannot double major. I'm sure we're going to get a lot of head nodding when I say that this is a rigorous, um, challenging program, regardless of major. But what you can do, and I keep 
I keep kind of using this term and I'm gonna explain it a little bit. You can curate your education based on where you ultimately wanna be. So Julia just spoke to taking, you know, social media marketing classes and visual communications. Let's say through her visual communications education, she loved the idea of getting a bachelor's degree in digital marketing that's an option. Getting a bachelor's degree in design is an option. So there's lots of options beyond the two-year program where you can start layering your education to really almost feel like a double major, but instead of a double major, you're just getting two degrees or sometimes three degrees. So I think that's always an option. Um, Ella, you're doing the, which bachelor's right now? Fashion design. Excellent. Yeah. And then Chaslin, you're going from product development to digital marketing. What was the evolution of that for you? Yeah, so I think I mentioned it a little bit before, but at FITM, um, for one of my product development classes, we had to create an entire brand, all of the, like, we had to do a target market, come up with your, like, brand image, designs, all of that. And I really loved that. And then also on the side, I... I feel like just being at FITM, you see all of the different career paths that you could possibly take. So then I found out that social media marketing and influencing was a thing. And I started doing that outside of school. And then I started applying it to the work that I was already doing. So when it was time for me to apply to my bachelor's, I saw digital marketing. and I was like, this is so perfect for me. So I'm going to be starting in fall of 2021. And I'm so excited. Um, but yeah, definitely what um, Jennifer was saying, like, you start out somewhere, but you never know where that's going to take you by the time you're done with your first two years. Absolutely. And I think sometimes when you look at the catalog at first, you think, oh my gosh, there's so many majors. I'm a creative. I love them all. How do I figure out my pathway? Trust that your admissions advisor will help you figure out. But also, once you're in the program, you're going to figure it out because you have so much exposure. Um, Someone wrote, Charmaine wanted to know about scholarships for transfer students. I'm just going to do a real brief scholarships for everybody. We do offer transfer scholarships, of course. If a student comes into the college with a prior college degree or is entering into one of our bachelor's programs straight from college, but we have other scholarships as well. We offer academic scholarships. We have need-based scholarships. We offer creative or industry merit scholarships. There are also outside kind of sponsored scholarships. Right now we have one specific to design majors, so appropriate to discuss today, um, which is called a guest scholars program. And it's based on a project and the winner gets their first year tuition free plus an internship with guests, which is really nice. Um, so check out the website for that. But yes, there's a lot of scholarship opportunity. And again, um, your admissions advisor would work one on one with you to see if there's opportunity to layer scholarship. Also important to know that Ella mentioned being a Fit and Fashion Club president in high school. So there are Fit and Fashion Club president and member scholarships, both at the high school and community college or college level. So check out your high school or your college, find out if there's a fashion club. If there isn't, you start one. And if you start one, you make yourself the president and then you get a big scholarship. So I think that's like a win-win situation. Again, all of that information is on the website. Um, okay. This is a brilliant one. This would be a good one to end on. I might wait for that, actually. Um, okay, sorry. <laughs> Clearly, I have to go through these. Oh, perfect for Julia. What does visual communications focus on, and how does it differ from graphic design, to your knowledge? Um, so visual communications is like a broad major. Um, and um, you can, there's so many like different classes that you can take within the major. And, um, and again, like the different professions that you can take. Um, as for graphic design, um, how it differs, I've taken two, you know, three classes. I've taken intro to Adobe, um, computer rendering, and currently in computer graphics. Um, and those have been basic knowledge, like how to use the programs. Um, so I think in a way it does have a relation with computer graphics and you can surely apply a career from visual communications into the graphic um, industry if you would wanna pursue a career um, in the graphic design. 
Yeah, I think also just so you know, we have a graphic design program. So graphic design and visual communication students both tend to come in somewhat art based. Like I have a background in fine art. I want to learn how to make my art marketable. But I will say graphic design students from day one are using this computer and layering in computer applications where visual communication students might be scratching the surface of graphic design. But if graphic design is your major, you'll know because you want to really drill down into various you know applications and really learn how to kind of bring your art to life using the you know mouse and computer as your paintbrush and easel kind of um okay oh this is a good one from nora did you stay in the major you originally applied to and got into fitum four and how hard is it to switch majors i'll answer that one if you're not 100 on when on it when you apply so did you did anybody change major or are you kind of still in your okay i'll tell you why i think that speaks to a couple of things first of all the application process you are working one-on-one -on -one with an admissions advisor we will thoroughly explain to you each major um and not just what you're learning in the classroom but also again where that major leads so I know it's tempting to say, oh my gosh, I'm interested in everything, therefore I don't know what I want to do. But I assure you, if you speak with an admissions advisor, we can really drill it down. We have, you know, key questions that we ask. We also have information on grads and what they're doing in the industry. We've had a lot of um, events like this, like webinars with graduates. I think sometimes if you kind of know what you want the end result to be, we can kind of work it back and track a major for you. Um, as far as switching majors is concerned, it actually doesn't happen very often for that reason. FITM is a private college. We work with our students in such a way that I think by the time a student has their acceptance interview, they know what they want their major to be at FITM, but you can change major if you need to just to answer that question. Um, all right, hold on, where are we? Sorry. Uh, what career pathway would, would, what career or pathway would look like if you were to major in fashion design? I'm, I'm assuming it means kind of versus fashion merchandising. So Ella, why don't you tell us a little bit first about what you ultimately want to do with your fashion design degree? Yeah, so I um, came into FITM wanting to start my own business, my own company, and specifically in the bridal industry, that's something I've always been really passionate about, and that's just what I want to do, um, which was really great because FITM helped me get a job at a bridal boutique in Beverly Hills and all of that. Um, so that's kind of the end goal, but like, I've definitely, especially like seeing some of my friends who graduated get jobs, like I can kind of go anywhere, like I want to go into bridal, but I just kind of started working with someone designing like more like streetwear clothes for like one, like it's like this music producer wanting to do like a line kind of thing. So like, it's like very different, it kind of changes. So I think you kind of have to be go with the flow, but like end goal, I want to own my own company. Um, right on, yeah. Good for you. And I think um, I tell students, and I said this earlier, say yes to everything. Even if the internship feels totally contrary to what you think you might want to do when you graduate, you're going to learn something. And you're, you are learning from professionals in this industry. So there's no better way to kind of um, get that experience than to try many, many things on for size. Chaslyn, have you, are you working right now or have you taken on any internships while you've been here? Yeah, I actually did one internship last year and it was with the National Retail Federation. So they needed an ambassador. So I had to go through a whole like interview process and it was really cool. I basically got to tell other students about all of the retail opportunities that um, NRF has. And I also ran like their little Instagram account. And then I did another internship last year and this year, um, completely like unrelated, but I got it. I know I got it because I have like fit them on my resume, which is awesome. But um, I was an Amazon Prime student social influencer. So they needed help creating content for their social channels. And I did that, which was a paid internship, which is an amazing opportunity and experience. Um, so they weren't through the career center, but I just think having fit them on your resume definitely will get you um, those internships that you're looking for. 
Sure, kind of gets you noticed. And I think that that speaks to also just being kind of entrenched in your environment. Being in LA, I have so many students say, I just met someone who works in the industry at Phil's, you know, or, you know, just walking around downtown. I had a student visit the campus last week and she met someone who works in the fashion industry in the elevator of her hotel. So I think when you're in your industry and you're in your environment, you never know where that next great opportunity might come. So good to kind of Talk to everybody and keep your options open. Okay, Sapphire has a question. Do you get to pick your roommate or are they or are they kind of selected for you according to your major? So Chaslin and Ella, when you were in Fitham Housing, how did you find your roommates? My process was a little crazy. I went into it thinking that I was going to join one of like the Fitham Facebook groups and find someone there. And then for a short amount of time, I was on Instagram reaching out to different people and I ultimately decided to take a leap of faith and just do, Fitham has an option where you can do it by random. Um, again, like definitely like think about it before you do it, but I did it and by the grace of God, I got an amazing roommate and she's actually still my roommate now. So we have like our own apartment together, but we spent that year together. Um, it was four people in a two bedroom and it was a great experience, but it was by random um, and that can go either way, you know what I mean? So. If you know someone already, you can definitely get a room with them, but they do have an option for them to choose for you. But I don't think it has anything to do with major. No, it doesn't. And well, I'll um, have you tell me how you found your roommates too, Ella. Um, but Chaslin had mentioned something. When a student is accepted to FITM, they have access to a private Facebook page specifically for FITM students. This is a great opportunity to not just kind of meet other students that will be starting with you at the college, but also to meet roommate opportunities or to, you know, prospective roommates. So students do meet that way. Students certainly meet through Instagram. Um, and even though random sometimes sounds like a random and scary word, the reality is you are with your peer group, right? You're with students who are, again, following a passion-driven path, who are equally motivated and focused and here for all the right reasons. So sometimes random tends to be just a stroke of genius, as it has been in Chaslin's situation, um, and it works. So what I will say, though, about housing is um, that we do try to pair students by age. So if you're coming straight from high school, we want you to be with other students that are also straight from high school, maybe never been to college before or something like that. So just kind of keep that in mind. Same goes for some time at community college or transferring from university. Were you going to say something, Chaslin? I'm sorry, I feel like I cut you off. No, I was just going to type it. It's not that important, but I kind of wanted to add that three of my roommates or two of my roommates were actually in my major anyway. So we were still able to like work on homework and stuff together. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but it did happen a lot with a good amount of people. So that's just one thing to like take into account. That's really true. I mean, I'll tell you one thing, your major or your roommate's never going to be like a, uh, you know, kinesiology major somewhere. So I think that speaks to, again, being in this community of like-minded people that are creatives also, and you really push yourself. You guys had mentioned that earlier. Ella, how did you find your roommates? Yeah, so I actually did a little bit of all of them. So for my first couple quarters at FITM, I had met my roommates through the school's app we, or the the Facebook group and all of that and we kind of connected realized that we all got along really well talked for a little bit and then we all applied to be roommates together um, and then a couple of them got a couple different opportunities so they moved out of student housing and then I did for my last quarter in housing I did a random roommate and actually I got really lucky too I got a really great random roommate so I'd say like try I had great experiences with both meeting them and doing random so good yeah, yeah when Julia, I got totally. oops, Nope, that, that, that was it. <laughs> I'm telling you, random is not so random at FITM. Sometimes it works. And Julie, I know you're planning to come to LA at some point. Do you already have roommates lined up? I do. Um, even being remote, I actually have one of my friends from home who is um, going out to FITM with me in the fall. But I have also met a ton of amazing people just through social media. Um, on Instagram, my visual communications major, we have a group chat and there's also a FITM um, group chat. So I've met so many people um, through different group chats. And I also have another friend um, who is currently in Pennsylvania that I'll be rooming with um, for fall. Good. Good for you. And Julia, somebody wants to know, what is your ultimate goal after you graduate from FITM? Where do you see yourself in this industry? Um, so my ultimate goal after graduating FITM, I would love to become a wardrobe stylist. Um, I'm currently still in my third quarter, so I'm still figuring out 
what path if I want to do personal styling or red carpet. Um, I've kind of piqued an interest too in window dressing as well, styling the, the different pieces. Um, so I'm kind of just going with the flow um, with everything, but I'm excited to see what the other classes um, offer and what will push me for my career. Good for you. Great. Um, all right. So, oh, Nora's got a question for all of you. I want, maybe Julia, you can answer first. How hard is it to manage work and study at FITM considering how rigorous the coursework is? Um, I, it's definitely manageable. The one thing that I really love about FITM is that you get to pick your time of when you want to take classes. You can take morning classes, you can take evening classes, um, and it's so manageable because you can, you know, see with what your work schedule is and how you want to plan out your schedule. Um, I think time management is definitely key. So if you have a ball game of how you want to run and let it go, um, everything works out smoothly. Smoothly. Excellent. And the program is very project based, so you're not waiting until week eight to get your project done. That's due on week ten, right? Um, Chaslyn, how about you? Are you able to manage the time in the school and the whole thing? And do you get some sleep still? Um, I think the main thing that any student will tell you is that it's definitely a lot of work, um, but it's fun work. I mean, if it's your passion, like you're going to enjoy doing it, but it is a lot of work. And I do remember um, at my first quarter in person on campus, they actually had the option where they helped us create our own time management plans which was so cool. So I think I went to the idea center and the library and they created like a little time management plan for me so I could schedule like homework classes and like free time, obviously like self-care is so important. Um, I actually think it's easier now that it's online probably to manage your time, but you definitely don't wanna be in front of a screen all the time. So like Julia was saying, just manage your time wisely and it is doable, but it is a lot of work to answer Excellent. the question. And use the services provided to you at the college. Use the Idea Center, use the Career Center, all of those things that are so important to help prepare you for success um, and excess, I guess. Um, Ella, what about you? How are you managing your time in school and working totally. all Totally. Yeah, I was going to say I might have a little bit of a different perspective because I also work full time while going to classes. So definitely like it's possible like and I do freelance work. So like it's possible you can do all the things. Time management so important. Um, it does help that everything's kind of project based. So a lot of times teachers will kind of lay out like what you're doing for the quarter. So you can kind of plan around that. But even then, just like I bought a planner, like my first week at FITM and like, I haven't put it down since like, I swear, like you just have to really schedule out your time, but then you still have time to do all the fun LA stuff. If you really like, put you get out of it, what you put into it. So like, if you do the work and do it timely, then you're going to have a great time, you know? So Excellent. That's a metaphor for life, I think. You know, you take that into your career also. Um, all right, I saw something really good. Okay, I'm going to save that one for second to last. How about, um, I've considered being a stylist as an outcome of my career. Do you recommend a merchandising degree? So we just heard from Julia that she's studying visual communications and hoping to be a stylist. And I think it goes back to what we said earlier, which is there are many paths to the end result. So we look at kind of where are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, what do you want to learn, where do you ultimately want to be, and we help students kind of, um, you know, choose their major accordingly. But I've seen a couple people bring up merchandising, so I just wanted to add here that tomorrow we're doing a very similar kind of webinar, but with uh, business students. So if you want to know more about the business majors, like our business management bachelor's program or merchandising and marketing, Chaslin will be back in product development because, again, some of our majors have that really strong business and design component. Um, join us tomorrow, same time, one o'clock, and you can ask some questions of merchandising students as well. Um, Kirsten Louise, how is the diversity of students on campus? Let's ask Ella and Cheslin since you guys are here, but Julia knows too because she's meeting everybody remotely. So whoever wants to chime in. Yeah, I would say like you're going to meet anyone and everyone at FITM. Like they're every type of personality, every type of anything like you're going to meet at FITM, which I think is great. Like I met a lot of people that like I never would have met back home and like I met just like you get all these different points of views because people come from all over the world they're not even all from like the United States like I've had classes with students from China or like Paris or Canada like just all over the place so it's a very diverse group of people and I think that really helps with inspiration and like growing as a creative because you get so many different perspectives and things like that excellent good Chaslin, have you had a similar experience 
Yeah, I definitely agree. I remember like at orientation within the few first few hours of being there, I met someone from like Dubai, Russia, like it's super diverse. And um, obviously as a person of color, that's something that you really want to value and take into account when you're picking where you're going to college. Um, so definitely don't worry about like feeling like the odd one out or anything because it's so diverse. And like she was saying, there's students from all over the world, literally. So really cool experience. I mean, there really are. You've probably seen it too, Julia, in your remote classes. I mean, some of our students from China are logging in at four o'clock in the morning in, in some cases. So talk about like motivated, focused, yeah. you know, professional students who are on a path. They won't be deterred. Have you noticed that too in your remote classes, Julia? Yes, I do get people from all over. I had a couple of um, my classmates from China, and like you said, they're up super duper late, but it's so inspiring just to see how determined that they are um, to pursue their careers. Um, but it's also really neat too to, too to see where like other people are coming from. Like there's a ton of people, like my friend from Pennsylvania, um, Dallas, just everywhere. And it's really cool to see where people are coming from and how we're all together. Um, in the classes and within the FITM community. Excellent, good. Okay, I have two questions. I think these might be our last two, um, but I want everybody to answer each one because I think they're really good. One is Olivia wants to know, and probably everybody else who's watching wants to know, how did you know that FITM was the school for you? Julia, why don't we start with you? So I first heard about FITM um, when I was in high school and um, I was doing a fashion design um, program in school and I knew FITM was the school to me because once I had a counselor come in and she just started describing all the different majors and then she mentioned visual communications and I just absolutely fell in love with the major but not only did I fall in love with FITM because of the major um, but also the community that FITM has um, and how engaged they are with student life and just wanting to involve a lot of people. I remember touring FITM my senior year of high school and I immediately was just so welcome into the community and I was I was like this this is me and this is for me. I think that's so important to feel so many students say I kind of feel at home here and ready to work you know there's something about being with other creatives that pushes you to perform at your best you know. Um, Chaslin what was your how did you know that FITM was the school for you? Yeah, so I also um, found out about it in high school. My junior year, I started the first fashion club at my high school, the FITM Fashion Club. And through that, I was able to get in contact with my admissions advisor and I got accepted my junior year. So it was the first college I got accepted into. And I was like, okay, I can put that in my back pocket. And I applied to all the schools. I mean, I lived on the East Coast, so I could have easily went to a school in New York. But ultimately, I chose FITM because of the major, because I was like, deciding if I wanted to do business or design business or design and product development is like so unique like there's no other college that offers a major where you can actually do both so I decided to just go for it and I visited LA and I fell in love with the campus so that's kind of how I decided I ended up deciding my senior year of high school but I already kind of knew the year before that I love the school so great LA is where you want to be too right um, and uh, how about you, Ella? How did you know FITM was the right school for you? Yeah, I did something very similar, kind of. I went and I toured all the design schools. I actually love New York as a city, so I was convinced I was going to go there. Like, I was like, I'm going to live in New York after I graduate. Like, that's it. That's where I'm going to be. Then I toured FITM, and they showed one of the videos about one of the programs, kind of like over, over, about the fashion program, kind of overviewing it. I remember texting my mom, like watching it. And I was like, I have to go here. Like, I love this. I love like the vibe, like walking through the school, you know, they have student work everywhere, like the VCOM windows or like fashion design, like dresses, like on whatever, just like everything. Like you're just surrounded by art, like FITM to me felt more like a design school, even just like interior design wise than any other school I visited. And I just felt like more inspired and more creative and more like at home there. So I just like, I knew as soon as I toured it, but <laughs> Yeah. Speaking of tours, just to kind of put this out there for the anybody who might be watching, we, uh, you know, we are now allowed to offer student tours to students. So if anybody wants to come on campus for a student tour, here's the thing. So let's think carefully. You have to have an appointment. So we are still following all guidelines. We're still doing things by appointment only. We can't have you know, group tours like we used to. I'm sure you guys took tours with like 20 people. Uh, we're not there yet. But what we can do is have you 
schedule an appointment time with your admissions advisor and you know we'll schedule accordingly so um, if you want to come on campus speak with someone first set that up with your admissions advisor and um, hopefully you can see the campus and kind of feel the same way these ladies felt because i think there's something about um, seeing it in person. Now, if you can't come and visit, yes, we do have a virtual campus tour. It's located on the website. So um, that's always fun too. And you can be in your jammies at home. Okay, so I have, this is the question I've been saving for last. So Celeste, I hope you're still um, out there. What advice would you give to a current high school junior or anybody who might be watching who wants to go into the fashion industry but is still not sure what major they want to go into or where to start so basically what are the pearls of wisdom that you want to leave this group with today um how about ella you start um i would just say it's kind of hard for me because I knew from the second I was like two that I was going to do fashion design. But if you're kind of thinking of like what you're going to do, because um, I've had friends with very similar things, like I would say maybe like try out different things. Like I don't know, I did like community theater and helped with costume design for that just to see if I liked actually designing and making clothes. Maybe see if there's like something available in your town or like try a fashion club at your school, like see how you like it or reach out to other FITM students, reach out to your advisors for sure. Um, and then just kind of like look at yourself, like look at different career things, like just see what really interests you the most. And then just like, go for it. Like, I guess, don't be afraid to try things, I think is the biggest thing. Um, especially if you don't live in LA, it can be scary, like making the jump to move out here. If you don't know for sure, like a thousand percent, I want to be a designer, I want to be a stylist, whatever, but just like try it. At the end of the day, you'll have a degree and you can do something if you decide being a designer isn't the thing you want to do. So I just say, yeah, I guess my biggest thing is just go for it. Yeah. But, don't talk yourself out of it, right? You can talk yourself into or out of anything, I think, in life. And fortunately, Celeste, as a junior, I know it's like heavy college season for you, but you have an opportunity to really do the soul searching and do the research necessary. What are your pearls of wisdom for everyone, Chaslin? Um, I would say mine. Well, when I was talking to my admissions advisor, she um, directed me towards the career quiz, which I'm pretty sure is on the FITM website. And so it's basically, uh, it's exactly what it is, a career quiz. So you can take out, you can just like um, select the different things that you're interested in. And then at the end, it'll give you like the best um, major option for you. So that helped me a lot with like narrowing down which ones I wanted to do. Um, but other than that, honestly, what Ella was just saying, like try different things. Um, since you're still in high school, like joining clubs or um, even contacting like your school advisor, school advisor to see um, like what would be the best fit for you. Yeah, great advice. Julia? Um, so to kind of go off of them, um, I think that your art truly speaks to who you are, who you are and what you have to offer the world. And just going back to what Ella and Chaslin were saying, I think if you just kind of go with the flow and just kind of, you know, take a look at yourself and like just trying every opportunity, um, I think is amazing. And you'll find what you're passionate about and don't ever be afraid to try something new. You might actually find that you like something when you least expect it to. Um, and that's the amazing part of FITM. You get to go along the journey and find it. Yep. Great. Goes back to that. Say yes to everything and just do it. Right. Thank you guys so much for coming on today. I know the students watching found it to be invaluable. They probably wish they could ask you more questions, but we're a little pressed for time. So I think Denise wants to maybe come back and say goodbye and wish us all farewell. And um, again, if anybody wants to join us tomorrow at one o'clock, we will be here with um, some business students. I just have to say thank you to all of you. I hope everybody enjoyed hearing you as much as I did. You did such a great job and it was exciting to hear about your journeys. And I hope um, those of you listening that still had questions really feel comfortable jumping in and talking to an advisor, because as I mentioned before, it's a very personalized um, experience going through the admissions process. And some people are ready to start right away and have a clear view on what they want. And sometimes people work with an advisor for a year and, you know, take steps to get to the right place. So we're here for you. And um, I just wanted to remind everyone that tomorrow's info session will have the same first portion as today. So we're going to cover, you know, the info about the college, but then we're going to have some students from the business majors, as Jennifer mentioned. So feel free to join again if you'd like. 
Um, also, we have a couple of upcoming lecture series taking place on May 11th and May 13th. And I think we have a screen here so you can join in on those to learn about things happening in the industry. They're really interesting and um, gives you some background on things that you might find fit your interests. And we hope this info session has been helpful to you. Remember to connect with your advisor. Um, we hope to see you in person soon. And thank you for joining us today. Thank you.